key to successful blogging. Um, some good friends. I remember reading uh, uh, a fellow, uh, John Gruber, who's a friend of mine, who was a site called Daring Fireball, and um, and they were saying kind of obsessions and passion uh, were were two necessary items. And, and and I think a lot of my favorite blogs are those things. Somebody loves something irrationally, beyond the point of all you know sanity, and just wants to own that topic. And when somebody has that kind of passion for what they love. Um, it can be interesting to you even if you otherwise wouldn't have been interested in the topic. And I think that's really fascinating. So some of the, the single subject blogs that I've seen uh, that are amazing, I, I saw one the other day, it was just about album covers from back in the old 12-inch vinyl days. And they took record covers and they cover one at a time and they talk about who the photographer was, who the art director was, what the impact of that album cover was. And it can be about a record that I've never heard, and even a group I've never even heard of. And they can tell a story about these album covers and what it meant to them and why it's important that makes it compelling to you. Um, that's mesmerizing to me. I think those are the great, truly great blogs of somebody that has a passion beyond all rationality and is so excited about it that you can't help but be excited too. Um, and I think it's a little bit of a bittersweet thing that the blogs people discover first are essentially you know, news or pop culture or sports, which are things that we've had in, you know, media about for years. And those are good. I'm, they're fine. I read them. Like, I think they're important. But it's always that personal blog that is somebody just telling you about their passion, their hobby, uh, their area of expertise, the thing that they know better than anybody else in the world. Um, those people are the best bloggers in the world to me. A lot of times people think getting your your company or your individual ideas visible on the web involves a lot of tricks. There's a whole industry called search engine optimization or SEO. And, um, and you know, a lot of it's legitimate. It's people doing consulting for, you know, trying to get information discoverable on the web. And a lot of it is snake oil salespeople. You know, they, they feel like Google is this angry volcano monster and maybe if we throw a goat in there, it'll help. You know, they just have no idea um, whether what they're doing has any science behind it at all. And as it turns out, the fundamental principles are really, really easy. If you want to get a message out on the web effectively, um, frequently update your content. Make sure that you're, you know, and a blog is great for this. I'm biased because I love blogging, but like use any kind of system that lets you frequently update your content is going to make sure your information is current, that it's up to date, and it's also going to let people know that you are committed to communicating with them over time. Um, so frequently updated content, have it be well written, well designed, well presented. Um, those sound like little things, but the way information looks and how readable and discoverable it is makes a big difference as to whether people want to share it. Um, and all of the search engines or all the other systems people use to discover content are built around links. Whether it's people sharing a link in, in Facebook or uh, posting a link on their blog, um, those are the currency by which people discover things on the web. And um, you know, you earn a link. It's not the kind of thing where you should be paying somebody to, you know, to post links to what you do. You earn a link by having something compelling and unique um, that people feel like they want to share. And that gets to the last point, which is building a relationship. The best way to get a really big site to link to your content or to get a really, you know, somebody with a lot of reach to help amplify your message on the web is to build a relationship with them that is real. Think about what they want, not just when you're asking them to do you a favor, um, and reciprocate when they've created something that's worth sharing. You know, share what they do as well. And if you follow those principles of updating frequently, have something that's worth reading, have it be well presented, and build relationships with others that want to amplify your message, you don't need to worry about any of the tricks for the search engines or anything else. Everything flows from that. Um, and I've been very fortunate. You know, I, I, I've been writing a lot lately, and you know, on my blog for 10 years, and. People have said, you know, gosh, you get a lot of links and people, you know, you rank first in Google for your name. And um, those things happen because you have built up a reputation and relationships over time that people want to honor by amplifying your message for you. Yeah, I think, you know, I've had the privilege to work with a lot of the best bloggers in the world and they're all making money one way or another. You know, they have advertising on their site or they use it to get, you know, speaking gigs or for people to pay for them to consult. Um, it's not always direct, but every door that I've ever had open in my entire career has happened because of my blog. Um, so I could trace back every dollar I've ever earned to being because of my blog, certainly since I've been blogging, right? Um, 
I think it's really counterintuitive for people to think that the thing they do that generates that so much value isn't necessarily where they get the direct dollars from. Um, but there are people that have information that is super valuable that people would pay to subscribe to their blog. So I think there's a lot of different paths to it. What you have to think about is total earnings versus total effort and recognize that they won't always correspond one to one. Uh, and that's true of the entire economy. I mean, I think you look at oh, what Chris Anderson's writing in Free, what um, you know, the fellows are, that are writing in Free Economics are writing in, in Super Free Economics. Like, there's a lot of these ideas that are being covered that are saying you can create a lot of value over here, maybe not get direct compensation for it, and get a lot of reward over here, and just make sure you know how that flow happens. But it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one exchange that where you put in the most effort is where you get the most reward. Thank you.